Bible study. First principles of the Christian life, talking about confession and repentance tonight. Amen. So let's open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again for giving us uh, this time to open up your word. Lord, we do not take this time, uh, we do not take it for granted, Lord Jesus, this opportunity that we have. So Lord, we pray you will be with us right now, even as we open up your word and speak about confession and repentance, vital components to this life that you have given us in you. Lord, we pray that you will bless us and keep us and hold us in the palm of your hands. Draw those who need to hear these words tonight to this place on the World Wide Web. Lord, have your way. Bless us together right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Let me just remind you uh, that if you are if you are watching, uh, if you are watching us on Facebook right now, uh, that you share out this page, uh, that others also uh, may be blessed. We always want to ensure that as many people as possible are able to hear uh, the life-changing message of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we want to make sure that we do that. Amen. All righty then. God bless you, Miss Sarah. God bless you, Tracy T. Amen. God bless you and thank you for joining us tonight. Well, our our topic, our brand new topic. Once again, we've spoken about we've spoken about uh, we've spoken about heaven. We've spoken about hell. Uh, now we're going to speak about confession and repentance. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, grace and peace to you also, my sister Josie. Uh, confession and repentance. Amen. Very important and vital uh, parts of the Christian life. Now, let me just let me just set let me just put this out there first. Uh, many of us are aware that there are, as I said at the outset, that there are uh, a segment of of Christianity that believes that confession and repentance uh, are no longer necessary for those who are in Christ because after all, uh, our sins past, present, and future have been already forgiven. And this is true. This see see here here is what here's what we mean when we say that discernment discernment is not just knowing the difference between right and wrong, but between right what's right and almost right. And that is a case when uh those within the Grace Revolution when they state uh that we are of sins past, present and future are forgiven. This is a true statement. This is a true statement. Jesus' death on the cross made it possible for our sins to be forgiven. However, however, we still sin. What do you do with sin that is yet committed in your life? That's not soft so, but you and I, we still sin. You and I still have a sin nature that, as I always say, is ready and willing to sin at a moment's notice. Uh, what do you do when you sin? Those within the grace revolution will tell you uh, that we do not need to dwell on our sin because that gives us a sin consciousness. And if you sense the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that is not the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin. That is the Holy Spirit convicting you of righteousness. Now, let me just say that that is borderline, if anything, borderline blasphemy to, to miss to misunderstand the Holy Spirit's ministry in such a way. No, no. When If you are a Christian and you sin, the Holy Spirit makes you very aware of your sin. He doesn't condemn you, but he makes you aware of your sin. You know that you have sinned. And once that takes place, now you need to confess. You need to confess. Now, having said that, let's start out with uh, a definition uh, of confession. When we look at the word confess in the Bible, the word confession, it simply means to acknowledge. It means to acknowledge your sin. It means to, it is an admittance of sin. Lord, I have sinned. I have sinned against you. We're going to read several we're going to read several Psalms uh, in a bit uh, that point this out. Sin is against God, uh, most of all. We look back and we see David. Uh, David, uh, rather not David, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Joseph. 
in the Old Testament, book of Genesis, uh, and how he made this statement, how could I sin when he was tempted, when he was tempted to sin, uh, and he was eventually thrown in jail. And, and he said, how could I sin and do this evil against God? So first and foremost, anytime you or I sin, that sin is against God. God bless you, Edie. Anytime you or I sin, sin is against God. Okay, yes, you and I can sin against one another, but first and foremost, sin is against God. And once the Holy Spirit makes sin in your life, make, what makes you aware of the sin in your life, you have a responsibility to confess it, to say, I admit I have sinned. So number one, confession is admitting your sin. Secondly, confession is agreeing with God concerning your sin. What God says that sin is, you agree with him that your sin is what he says. That is confessing. And thirdly, sin is aligning yourself with God. Very very similar to being in agreement, but once again, it's aligning yourself with God concerning sin. So it is admitting it is agreeing, it is aligning yourself with God concerning sin. That is confession. Now, here's the question that I have received over the years, many times. Uh, the answer to a question that I pose to people all the time. And the question is simply, uh, what does confession mean? I also say the same thing of, of repentance. What does repentance mean? And the answer that I receive uh, 80%, 90% of the time is that, repentance or confession it means to ask god for forgiveness and this this is this is not exactly right this is not exactly right just because once again just because a person confesses their sin does not mean that they will repent once again hence the difference between confession and repentance confession is once again acknowledging sin I have sinned. I did it. I'm guilty. Lord, you are right. That's confession. Repentance, on the other hand, repentance is being made aware of the sin and turning around. It is, it is a change of mind that leads to a change in behavior. That is what repentance is. A change of mind that leads to a change of action or behavior. Now, at the at the forefront of both of these of both of these things that happen uh, in our lives, confession and repentance, is the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Once again, the Holy Spirit makes us aware that we have sinned. Now we are responsible to confess that sin. Yes, I have sinned. The Holy Spirit is saying, you have sinned. And now we say, yes, I have sinned. Now, what am I going to do about it? Repent. That's what needs to be done once confession is made. I will turn around and I will go away from the direction that I was going. It is turning away from sin and turning towards God. That is confession. Amen. A brother, uh, my brother uh, Frank has a question. Uh, Frank says, please clear up if we have to ask for forgiveness since at salvation we are forgiven past, present, and future. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> Confession of sin and repentance are ongoing things that the Christian must do. Once again, we are yet in these mortal corrupted bodies and you and I still sin. We still sin. And so, if I go, if when we go to the book of, let's go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, and verse number 9. 1 John chapter 1, very familiar portion of scripture. God bless you, my pastor, my you. God bless you. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 9. It says, if we, now who's the we he's talking about here? The we John is speaking to Christians. John is speaking to Christians. So he's including himself. If we confess our 
since he is faithful and just or righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is what that is what scripture says. And so scripture uh, is very clear that we are to uh, continue to ask for uh, forgiveness. Now, if I may go into the uh, go into some grammar, uh, some Greek grammar, if I may, here in First John chapter one and verse number nine, when it says that we are to confess uh, our sins, it's what it is saying is in the tense in the original Greek. It is saying that we are to continually do this. It is an ongoing action. It never ceases. We are to confess and repent where necessary. Whenever we have sinned. You don't wait till Sunday morning. <laughs> you don't wait till you get to prayer meeting. You pray. Once the Holy Spirit makes you aware of sin in your life, Lord, forgive me. The Holy Spirit makes you aware of your sin. That is conviction. The Holy Spirit says he puts his finger on a point, a place, a time, whatever you have sinned in this area. And once you become aware of it, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me, wash me of my sin. And I've heard stories. I've heard stories of individuals who have gotten caught up in what we have called the grace revolution uh, and have decided not to confess their sins. But what do you do with your sin? If you're in the grace revolution, if, a, if an individual is in the grace revolution and they are saved, yes, I'm not saying that people that are in that, uh, in the grace revolution are not saved at all. But if you're saved and you're in the grace revolution and you sin, what do you do with, when you're convicted of sin? Because the Holy Spirit is yet in you and he convicts you. What do you do? You ignore it. Basically, what you do is ignore it. That's not the Holy Spirit telling me that I've sinned. You sinned. Grace Revolution acknowledges that we sin, but we don't want to get a sin consciousness and we don't want to offend God by continually bringing up our sin to him because all of our sins, past, present, and future are forgiven. The cross of Jesus Christ makes that statement true. Anytime you go to the Lord, your sins will be forgiven. When you are, you know, repenting in sincerity, your sins will be forgiven. We know that our past sins are forgiven. What I did before Christ is under the blood. It is gone in the mind of Christ. It does not exist anymore. What I did before Christ is over. Everybody else might remember it, but as far as Christ goes, it's blotted out, gone. Our present sins... Our present sins will be forgiven when we ask. Future sins. If I sin five days, five months, five years from now, I am assured that my sins will be forgiven because of what Christ did on the cross. So my sins, past, present, and future, will be forgiven. That is what is meant by that statement our sins, past, present, and future are forgiven. True. But that doesn't mean that because our sins, past, present, and future are forgiven, that we no longer have to confess our sins. Yes, you do. We still have to confess our sins, or else 1 John 1 9 uh, is a misprint. Or else 1 John 1 9, the Holy Spirit made a mistake when he wrote what he wrote, and he did not. When we sin, if we confess, we, us, Christians, confess, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? All righty. Frank says, I understand we have to continue to confess and repent, but why do we have to ask for forgiveness if we are already forgiven? That forgiveness part, I don't fully understand. Well, once again, confession and repentance are part of Forgiveness, confession, and repentance. Let me go to the book of Psalms. Let me go to the book of Psalms. <clears throat> and let's do, let's do Psalm, let's do Psalm 32. Let's do Psalm 32. Now here is Psalm 32. David, 
possibly he wrote this once again, like Psalm 51, when he was, uh, after he had sinned with Bathsheba, when he hid his sin for those nearly a year, well, several months at least, that he hid his sin. Here's what he said. Let me start from verse number one. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. So right there, you're blessed when you're forgiven. And so we need to be forgiven if we want to be blessed. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. That, that the Lord does not blame sin. Once again, because it's forgiven. And in whose spirit there is no guile or deceit. Verse number three. When I kept silence... My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Kept silence about your sin. Not acknowledging, not admitting, not aligning yourself with God that what I did was wrong. Not willing to admit. Kept silence. He says, my bones waxed old. There was a groaning in his physical body because he was holding on to sin. And as I said earlier, I've heard stories about people who have decided to not confess their sins and the effect that it had on their life, both mentally, emotionally, physically, and most of all, spiritually. Verse number four, for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. That heavy hand is the hand of the Holy Spirit. That is conviction. The conviction was there. But yet and still, he was keeping silence. He was in hiding. He did not want anybody to know what he had done in his case. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. Here's verse 5. Finally, he says, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. He said, I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And look what happens when he confesses. This is David, a man after God's own heart, who knew better. But here's what he says. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. And so if we want to be forgiven, we must confess our sins. We must confess. And so, once again, uh, confession and repentance are yet necessary. Amen? The question says, do we have to continue to ask for forgiveness in addition, in addition to confessing and repenting and repentance? And that answer would be yes. We continually have to ask the Lord for, once again, when we sin. You and I sin. You and I may sin when we don't realize we have sinned. Remember Psalm 139. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. We sin in word, deed, and thought. Lord, if there's anything in my heart and life that I've done, that I have offended someone, that I have offend you, offended you, Lord, cleanse me, wash me, forgive me. I confess my sin to you. I admit that whatever I did that was against you is wrong. And I confess. And I repent. I don't want to do it anymore. And so, yes, uh, confession, repentance, and forgiveness. They, 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 they go together. They all go together. Amen. We need, we need to be forgiven. But before we, be, before we can be forgiven... We need to acknowledge our sin and we need to repent of our sins. Amen. And so once again, the difference between confession and repentance, confession, confession is turning, uh, God bless you, uh, Frank, uh, confession is admitting, it is agreeing with God, and it is aligning oneself with God concerning your sin. Repentance, on the other hand, is turning around. That's the response. Con uh, repentance is the response to confession. And when those things are done, and those attitudes are in our heart, Lord, I confess, Lord, I repent. The Lord, graciously we see that the Lord forgives. He forgives. The, the Bible talks about a God that he will abundantly pardon. He graciously pardons. He wants to forgive. But we must meet, uh, we must meet the proper stipulation. We must confess. As we said just a moment ago, a person can confess without repenting a person can acknowledge that they've sinned and yet not turn around 
And so we know that we don't, uh, that is something uh, that should not be done also. Repentance, as repentance happens, repentance uh, needs to to not just be spoken out, but it there's there's work that needs to be done. If I could use the word work, when we talk about repentance, we need there's action that needs to be taken. We need to turn around and go the other way. Okay, and so that is very vital. That is very vital. So there is a there is a danger. There is a danger in not confessing our sins, not aligning ourselves with God, not agreeing with God concerning our sin. I can remember a conversation that I had with someone years ago. Years ago, they, 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 the person was not saved. The person was not saved. But the person uh, made the statement that they, they didn't agree. They didn't agree with what the Bible said concerning uh, adultery and fornication. They, did, they, didn't agree, they didn't agree with, uh, uh, let me just be a little bit more transparent. The, the conversation was about uh, uh, fornication and sex before marriage. And this was a young person I was teaching. And, and they said they, did, they had a problem with a fornication that's you know that's not 20 that's not 20th century you know we we should be able to sleep with who we want the bible is outdated and and once again as long as an individual has that mindset concerning a portion or about scripture in general that it's outdated that what it says it doesn't really mean then that person is not in a place of confession of course not in a place of repentance, if they won't acknowledge that sin is sin. And so for that person, as they may have been uh, taking part in fornication, it, it didn't it didn't phase them because to them, to them, there wasn't anything wrong with it. And if we look at our own sin, if we would look at our own sin and say, I don't think it's that bad, what's the problem? What's the big deal? It's just that, or it's only that. If scripture speaks against it, then we need to not do it or not be that way. That That's, that's scripture. I want to be in line with what scripture says. And once again, none of us do it perfectly. <laughs> none of us. There is no, what I like to say is there is no graduating class in Christianity. You know, no one has got it all right and has done it all right. We all fall short, all of us. But we want to make sure that we have things in place. We have the word of God and the word of God will lead us and guide us in the way that we should go as we are led by the spirit of God within us. We can continue to do uh, what the Lord wants us to do. So, Confession is absolutely necessary. Let me bring you to let me bring you to Psalm 51. And we're very familiar with Psalm 51. Very familiar with Psalm 51. We're talking about confession, most of all here. And Psalm 51 starts off with, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Now, I want you to see as we read on. I want you to hear and listen to how many times, how many times David uh, refers to his sin, his sin, how he is acknowledging his own sin. Once again, this is David's great uh, prayer of penitence, his great prayer of confession. And notice how many times he refers to himself and his sin. We just read the first ones. He says, uh, According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. He, he's, he's admitted, it's my sin. Verse number two, he says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, my sin. For I acknowledge, there it is, I acknowledge, that's confessing, I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. He says, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Now, go down to verse number nine. 
verse number nine. He says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. He says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. These are all the things that will happen as we begin to confess our sins. Allow the Holy Spirit to put shine his light, put his finger on sin in our lives. Our response, Lord, create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That was, he didn't want the Lord to remove his hand, to remove his presence from him because of his sin. He says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Let me stop right there. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. If we hold on to our sin, if we don't confess our sins and turn from them, that is repentance, then we lose the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, as scripture says, because we are holding on to sin. Uh, Psalm 66 and verse number 18, it says very clearly, if I regard or treasure or hold on to iniquity, In my heart, it says that the Lord will not hear me. If I hold on to, that means if I'm holding on to sin, I am certainly not confessing it. If I'm holding on to sin, I am certainly not repenting from it, turning away from it. I'm holding it. And it says, if I regard iniquity, if I hold on or treasure sin in my heart, that God will not hear me. He will, he just will not do it. Amen. And so we need to make sure uh, that we understand. It's very important that we understand that confession and repentance are vital parts of the Christian life. It does not make us sin conscious. It does not. It restores us into fellowship with God because what happens, and we've been reading about David, uh, what happens when sin begins to stack up in your life? And either you're holding on to it or you're hiding it or else for some other reason you just are not confessing your sins. There's a barrier that takes place. There's a barrier that takes place uh, in our hearts. And there's a barrier uh, that needs uh, to be broken. Uh, We need, we read in the book of uh, Isaiah. Let me find the scripture uh, in uh, the book of Isaiah. God bless you, Sheila. Uh, uh, Sheila, amen, God bless you, Sharon, amen, Uh, let me read what it says here uh, in the book of Isaiah, I want to make sure I get this one right, all righty, I want to make sure I get the right scripture, all right, well, if I don't find it, I will tell you exactly uh, what it says, it says that God's hand is not short, And his ear is not dull of hearing. But our sins, our sins have come between us and God that he will not hear us. Our sins. That means that there is no confession. That means that there has been no, no repentance at all. Sin will create a wall between us and God. A wall. You can call it a wall. You can call it a barrier. You can call it a valley. Something happens when there's sin in the life that goes untouched, that we just leave it there. Something happens. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to place his hand on our lives, on our hearts, and we need to confess. We need to repent. And once again, once that takes place, fellowship Again, fellowship. Let me go back to 1 John. Let me go back to 1 John and, and continue reading on. Verse number 10, 1 John 1, 10. Many times if we read 1, 9, that uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we, we stop right there. Let's go to 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned and when we don't acknowledge our sin, it's just as good as, it's just as well as saying 
that we are saying that we have not sinned if we don't acknowledge. Amen. We need to uphold our end of our relationship with God. If we want our fellowship with the Lord to be sweet, let me use the word sweet. If we if we want our fellowship with him to be as it should be, as 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 well as it can be in these mortified uh, and corrupted bodies, we need to keep the slates clean. We need to allow him to deal with sin in our hearts and deal with sin in our lives. Amen. Now, once again, anytime you talk about confession and repentance, obviously you got to talk about sin. And when you talk about sin, you got to talk about how do you live for God? How do you live for God? Amen. How, how do you live for God in the first place? Now, the way that we have been taught to live for God is very simple. You get saved, you start going to church, you start reading your Bible, you pray a lot, you come to church, and you just get involved in a ministry, and you just do church, and you just be a Christian. Just just live for God. Just have God in your life. Just do what the Lord wants you to do. That, that That's that's all well and good, and there's nothing wrong with anything I said. It, it's not. It's That's right. Everything I said is right. That's what we do. There's nothing wrong with those things. But once again, when we talk about living for the Lord, we, the Bible says that we walk. That means our, our life in Christ. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. We live this life by faith. We were saved by grace through faith, and we must continue to live this life by grace through faith, but what kind of faith? We don't put faith in faith. We put our faith in the very one who saved us in the first place. The way that you and I got saved, we put our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. You believed. You believed that he was God's son. You believed. First, a Romans Romans chapter, uh, let me go to Romans chapter 10 as we begin to wind down here tonight. Uh, Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 9 and 10. Let me go there. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, this is how we got saved, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So that's how our salvation takes place. And so we need to, as we place our faith in Christ, when we got saved, we need to live for Christ in the same way that we came to Christ. And that is faith in Christ and his finished work. When Christ said on the cross, it is finished, that is exactly what he meant. It is finished. It is complete. And there is nothing that we can do to add to our salvation. Here's what many of us, many of us don't quite understand. And including myself. That you and I, from the moment we got saved, whenever, whenever that was, whether you're saved a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, many years, whenever you were saved, you are not more saved now than you were then. Your position in Christ is the same as it was. You are justified. You are sanctified in the eyes of God because of Christ. We are, as scripture says, we are the righteousness of Christ in him. That's who we are. That's our position. And that was position, that was the position when I got saved 40 or some odd years ago. And that's the position that I'm in right now. We grow in grace. We grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, but your position remains the same. Our condition, okay? Our condition fluctuates. Our condition 
Sometimes we're up. Sometimes we're down. Sometimes we're in the valley. Sometimes we're on the mountain. Our condition will fluctuate in this life. But our, once again, our position never changes. I'm not more saved now than I was then. I'm not more saved. I'm still saved. Amen? I'm in the same position that I was then. I've grown just like you have grown since you've been saved. You didn't. You know some things now that you didn't know at the first. You've grown. You've grown. And that's what it is. So once again, confession, repentance, vital, vital to the Christian life. We need it. Amen. But once again, living for Christ. We live for Christ through faith in the Son of God. Through faith in the Son of God. Amen. That, that's how we live this life in Christ. Amen. That's how we do it. And we honor him and we bless him and we thank him for who he is and what he has done. Amen. Let me just finish off reading here uh, in, in uh, Psalm 51 uh, before we close. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, notice what he says in verse number 13. Now, once this transaction has taken place, once he has uh, now confessed his sin, now he says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's the turnaround. That's the repentance. You see, he's going in another direction. He's going in another direction. The direction he was going, I'm hiding my sin. I'm not being forthcoming with my sin. I'm not going to confess. I'm not going to say anything. That's the direction he was going. But now he says, after he has confessed, he says, then I will teach transgressors thy way so that they will be converted unto you. The turnaround. He has now repented. He's going in another direction. Okay? And of course, the Lord has forgiven him. He has forgiven him. And so we bless the Lord and we thank him. See, in old in the old in old test in the old testament, sin was covered. Covered. And scripture says in the book of Hebrews that it was not possible uh, for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. That's why the old testament way, as perfect as it was for what it was meant to do, it was only a temporary or stopgap measure until Christ would come. Now Christ has come. Christ does not cover our sins. Okay? Christ does not cover our sins. Christ washes our sins away. He, they, They're gone. They are gone. They don't exist anymore in his, in his mind. They're gone. And, and that, that when, I, when I think about that aspect, of my salvation, and, and you should too. When we think about that aspect of our salvation, knowing that our sins are completely abolished, gone. It, but Lord, don't you remember? No, but Lord, how about the time when? I, no, 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 no. It is gone. We have been cleansed. Cleansed. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to bring the lost to him. And that's what he has done. We have given our hearts to Jesus. And we live for him. And there's no way that we could ever repay what he has done for us. Amen? Justification. Frank says justification. And uh, it's a little play on words. Justified means just as if I'd never sinned. That's how he looks at us. We are justified by faith. What kind of faith? Faith in what Christ has done. Justified by faith. Amen. And so once again, confession, repentance, we need to confess. We need to repent. Don't wait till Sunday morning. Don't wait till prayer meeting night. Don't wait till you get home. So I'm going to pray when I get home. No, you you know, you Lord, forgive me. 
Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Right here, right now. You don't have to have a prayer meeting. You know, if you're in public transportation and, and you're, or you're driving your car, you, you, you can't put your hands up and close your eyes and, and do it the way you would like to do it. You can't do it. But what you can do, Lord, cleanse me. Wash me, Lord. And he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. That's what he does. That's what he lives. He lives to intercede for us. Bring your sins. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Amen. Lord, we bless your name tonight. Lord, we thank you once again for giving us your word, Lord Jesus. Where would we be without your word, Lord Jesus? Lord, we stand truly amazed and dumbfounded even, Lord Jesus, when we think about the greatness of who you are, Lord Jesus. Lord, our minds cannot take it all in. But Lord, we thank you that you are who you are. And we thank you for this great salvation that you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of the cross. Confession and repentance and forgiveness are just a few of the blessings of our salvation. Lord, we just bless you and we thank you for who you are and what you have done. Be with us as we continue these lessons next time we come together. Lord, we pray that you will have your way. Draw those who need to hear, once again, these words to this place on the World Wide Web. Lord, we pray that you will have your way in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Once again, let me just say hi to uh, those who are here now. God bless you once again, Josie, uh, Mayu, Sheila. And Sharon, God bless you. God bless you, Sarah. God bless you, my brother Frank. God bless you, Doris. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, God bless you. I think we have everybody. Once again, God bless you, Edie. God bless you, Tracy T. God bless you all. God bless you all. I want to just thank you all for joining us here tonight. We know that God is on the throne and God is good and God is working. Uh, God is working and we pray that he will continue to do the work that he wants to do in our hearts as we give him free will and access to our hearts. Lord, have your way in me. Amen. That should be our prayer. Lord, have your way in me. Amen. And as always, we want to invite you to join us uh, whenever you are able. We're here online uh, four days out of the week. We're here on Sunday mornings, sometimes Sunday afternoon. We're here on Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and, of course, Wednesday nights. Amen? So we pray that you'll be able to join us. Uh, you can join us on Monday nights. Uh, Monday night, we have the Line by Line podcast, also known as the Monday night uh, Bible study. Uh, you can join us as we are now in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter uh, number 19. Matthew, chapter number 19. We're moving steadily along verse by verse and line by by line. So join us at seven o'clock on Monday night. Amen. On Tuesday night, Tuesday night on the Bible Speaks Live podcast, we'll have another timely word. Uh, we believe from the Lord. Amen. Uh, that will challenge us and, 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 and help us once again to continue to live uh, for the Lord. That's coming up this uh, Tuesday night at eight o'clock PM, the Bible Speaks Live podcast. Amen. And then uh, next week, Next week, we'll be here on the Cutting It Right Bible Study, First Principles of the Christian Life. We will continue uh, in our lessons here on confession and repentance. And we're going to take a look at uh, confession from dead works, rather repentance from dead works. What is that all about? Well, we're going to be talking about that the next time we come together here. Uh, so join us, uh, Nick, if you can, next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. PM. And as we said, Sunday morning, it's the Sunday Sermon Series. Um, join us if you can. If you cannot, join us live. You can catch us on the replay or catch us on Sunday afternoon. Once again, we're not sure. Uh, the time fluctuates from time to time, but we will be on uh, Sunday. So join us uh, if you are able. Amen. And our topic, our topic these Sunday mornings is just more of him. Amen. We're talking about the relentless pursuit of God. Amen. So once again, 
We pray that you'll continue to join us. And also don't forget that our book, Churchified or Sanctified, is still available on Amazon.com. Uh, you can get your copy there. Uh, our first book is also there. If you do not have a copy, it's The Lights uh, in the Window. Uh, once again, they're both, uh, they are both available uh, on Amazon.com. Amen. So once again, we pray, we believe that these two books will be a help to your Christian life. One is about evangelism and one is about uh, religion versus relationship. Amen. So two vital topics that I think uh, are necessary uh, for us today. Amen. You can also find us online. You can follow us uh, on our Facebook page. You can go to our YouTube channel, which is That's the Word Ministries. You can also, you can also go to our website, which is That's the Word.org. While you're over at YouTube, hopefully, uh, and if you would like to, you don't have to, of course, you can become a subscriber to our channel. Amen. Uh, so once again, we just bless the Lord and honor him and thank him for what he is doing. Uh, also on our website, uh, you can download uh, this free ebook, uh, Remaining Unmovable, Seven Quality Keys uh, to Quality uh, and Longevity in Christ. You can pick up that uh, on our website. It is a free ebook and you can download it and uh, that's available for you on our website amen you can also listen if you like to listen to these podcasts uh you can go to any one of these podcast platforms and many many others spreaker.com is our main podcast platform you go there and you'll find the other podcasts uh that we've been able to produce over the years amen so we honor the lord and bless him and i think that's about it uh here for tonight once again thank you for being with us and uh God bless you, and thank you for your questions. Thank you for your questions. If you do have a question, uh, you can email. Uh, you can email me. You can go on our website, and you can become a subscriber on the website, and you can go to our uh, email address on the website, and we will answer uh, your questions. Amen? So uh, you can do that. That is also something that we need to let you know. You can ask us questions if need be. Amen? So I'm here. I'm Michael Jakes, and uh, thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. God bless you.